Hello everybody, this is the Pocket Passer. I'm your host, Randy White. I hope all of you are having a fantastic day. I know I am. It is a Wednesday, and that means that I am doing my Week 8 Vegas predictions. So I'm just going to get right into it. First, I have my locks. My first lock is once again a Packers game. For the third straight week in a row, the Packers are involved in a lock. However, this time, I have the Bills-Packers game, and it's Bills minus 10.5. I am taking them. I'm taking them to beat Green Bay 34 to 20. The offense is spiraling in a big way, and I don't think the defense is even close to equipped to cover Stefan Diggs and Gabriel Davis and stop Josh Allen. I don't think it's happening. I think the Bills run through Green Bay. I also may or may not be hoping that my terrible record with locks might work for me by picking against Green Bay. We'll see how that works out. Um, but the Bills are just a much better football team on all fronts. Their special teams better. Offense better. They're actually better at every position on offense except for running back. And their defense is better, although Packers defense on paper has some players that are very, very good and <clears throat> very comparable to Bill's players, especially with some injuries with Micah Hyde, Micah Hyde being out, for example. But the Bills are performing at a much higher level all around. So I'm taking them to win. 34 to 20, minus 10 and a half. For my upsets, I got one upset. Rams versus the Niners. I'm taking Rams plus one and a half to win 23 to 17. Normally, I wouldn't consider a one and a half point spread to be an upset. But given the fact that the Rams record is so horrible against the 49ers the last four years, um, the 49ers have won. Jimmy Garoppolo, I believe, is 9 and 0 against the Rams. He will be playing this weekend against the Rams. And his only loss to the Rams is in the NFC Championship last year. In the regular season, Jimmy Garoppolo is undefeated. So I'm going to take the Rams to finally break that streak and go beat the 49ers 23-17 at plus one and a half. I've got two bet it games for you. My bet it games, starting with Saints hosting the Raiders. I'm taking the Raiders minus one and a half to win 31-17. I like the Raiders in this game. Raiders offense is very, very good. It's hard to stop. And I think this is the same. I don't trust the Saints at all. The Saints are inconsistent. They're very much so a week-to-week -week team. They're capable of putting up a fight and playing well against teams, but they just haven't really closed it out well um, in several games this season. They're sitting at 2-5. and five. The Raiders are a 2-4 team, but they're 2-1 and one in the last three games they've played after starting at 0-3. And, and I think there's kind of some poor luck in even their loss where they lost to the Chiefs by one point in one of, in that only loss that they've had in the last three games they played due to a two-point conversion with four and a half minutes left, which doesn't make any sense to me. And then Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro running into each other on a play where Devontae likely would have found himself open for maybe even a touchdown on that play if they don't collide. And if that's the case, Raiders more than likely win the game. Obviously, Chiefs could have put together a drive to tie it. But nevertheless, Raiders would have been in good position there. And we could be looking at maybe even instead of a 2-4 and four team, a 3-3 three and three Raiders team. Raiders' schedule eases up. I expect them to win a lot of games. I expect them to kind of hit stride and start to do pretty well. I think that starts this weekend. I'm taking the Raiders to win minus 1.5, 31-27 over the Saints. My other bet at game, Buccaneers-Ravens. The Buccaneers are somehow favored in Tampa, minus one and a half. I'm taking the Ravens. I think the Ravens are very clearly a better football team than the Buccaneers. The Ra Buccaneers may have a better defense than the Ravens. I don't think that's necessarily disputable. The Buccaneers' defense is excellent, but their running game is the worst in the league. They just Their offensive line has been abysmal all year long. Receivers constantly injured and failing to get separation, dropping passes when they are open. Tom Brady's play has declined, although I do I do think that he has gotten too much hate for his performance this year. I think most of his shortcomings are due to the shortcomings of his supporting cast offensively. I think that's actually pretty clear when you watch the games, but people are sick of Tom Brady being good, so the moment he underperforms, it's because he's washed, which is absurd, but I get it. I guess. No, actually, I don't get it. Jealousy is one thing, but to say that someone's washed because of the poor performance of their peers is 
an absurd overstep. And it's not at all the case here. Tom Brady can still sling the football. He's proven that week in and week out, especially on that perfect pass to Mike Evans. That would have been a 75-yard touchdown if he hangs on to it against the Panthers. Um, again, his play has declined, but so has the rest of his team drastically on the offensive side of the ball. It's showing they can't put drives together and they can't get in the end zone consistently enough to win football games. It's really the reason they lost to Green Bay, held to 12 points in a game where the Packers, after scoring on their first two drives, were completely silent for the rest of the game. Could have gone up 21 nothing, fumbled the football due to Vita Vea dropping into coverage and laying a good hit on Jones. Um, I just, I don't love the Buccaneers offense. It's so bad, and I think the Ravens are going to be able to put up more than the 14 points that the Buccaneers will score, or whatever it is. So I'm going to take the Ravens to win 24-16 to over the Buccaneers. I'm taking them plus one and a half. Finally, my game of the week, it's another Seahawks game, and this is the only game between teams with winning, winning records this week. Seahawks-Giants. Seahawks sitting at 4-3 and three atop of the NFC West, and the Giants in second place in the NFC East at 6-1. I'm taking the Seahawks minus 3 to win 32-28. to 28. Both these teams very good. Both these teams very good defenses, but the Seahawks offense is absolutely rolling right now. I think the Giants offense... Puts up good numbers, but I think the Seahawks offense just continues to roll. Kenneth Walker's been excellent. Tyler Lockett's been very, very good. Geno Smith has been exceptional so far this year, and I think they are going to kind of continue to grow their lead in the NFC West in terms of doing, doing their own personal job. Of course, I have the Rams winning, which will put them at 4-3, and three, one game back behind Seattle. But I think Seattle is just doing a lot of things very, very well right now. Like I talked about yesterday, they have some exceptionally talented rookies, Kenneth Walker being one of them. They also have Tariq Woolen on defense, who has been nothing short of exceptional, tied for the most interceptions in the league with four. A 6'4", lanky corner that has exceptional closing speed. He's been incredibly instinctive, uh, reacting to passes, breaking on routes. I've just been beyond impressed with everything Seattle has had to offer from this rookie class so far this year. And from Geno Smith, who's been a career backup, uh, has been playing absolutely lights out so far this year. Seattle is going to be one of the sleeper teams for potentially the whole year. I just cannot begin to express how exceptionally surprising Seattle's team is. This is a team that I thought was going to be potentially the worst in the NFL. Right now, they sit atop of the NFC West with an opportunity to grow their lead potentially. I just, Pete Carroll has done, and this is a, this is also talking about a coach who's in their 70s. Oh, what are you doing? How, how can you choose Pete Carroll over Russell Wilson? That was my stance on it personally. How do you choose an aging coach who really hasn't, isn't the defensive scheme, seems outdated, whatever it is, they're not getting what they need to get done, done to win football games. And a lot of that, Seem to fall on Pete Carroll. How do you choose a 70-year-old coach nearing the end of his career over a future Hall of Fame quarterback who seemingly was still in his prime? Clearly, the Seahawks made the right decision because Geno Smith is by far outplaying Russell Wilson, and this entire offense is by far outplaying anything Denver's offense is doing. So just huge, huge kudos, kudos to them. Kudos, kudos to them. Um... Giants, again, and the Giants are another team that I can say are far outplaying what their expectations were, sitting at 6-1, and one, second place in the NFC East, and also the second best record in the NFC. I just, they're sitting at the fifth seed right now. Another just pleasantly surprising team. Saquon Barkley is back to full form, likely going to win Comeback Player of the Year because his performances have just been nothing short of exceptional on all facets. His Elite cuts that we enjoyed watching so much in his first two years in the league are back right where he left off. He is, his speed, his game-changing speed is there. His ability to change directions at the size that he is and his strength running the football is unmatched in the league today. Well, I'd say unmatched with the exception of Nick Chubb, who is right there with him as well. Nick Chubb is nothing short of an extraordinary running back in his own right. I'd say those two guys right now are the top two performers in the NFL running the football, no doubt about it. And just everything that John, what Brian Dable has done coming into a new team and just completely transforming the culture is what it appears. 
turning around Daniel Jones' career so far. Daniel Jones has been significantly better um, this year than he has in all years past. He's turning the ball over less, although he does still fumble the football. Uh, pretty large, and a concerning amount. But other than that, Daniel Jones has cleaned up so many parts of his game. He looks so much more polished this year throwing the football, making the right reads. And it's just been really impressive to see both these teams completely transform. And now they're sitting at week eight, the only two mat the only matchup where both teams have a winning record. Not Packers, Bills, not Rams, Niners, not Saints, Raiders, not Buccaneers, Ravens. It's Seahawks, Giants. And that's why it's my game of the week. I think we're going to see a very, very good football game. I really sat there for quite a good amount of time deciding, do I think the Giants are going to win this game? Am I going to take the Giants plus three? Am I going to take the Seahawks minus three? I just have something in my gut that says the Seahawks jump to five and three. Either way, my stock on both these teams will not drop regardless of the outcome unless there's a blowout taking place, which I don't think will be the case at all. I think we're in for another very good Seahawks football game. I'm really excited for this weekend to play. Not super excited for Sunday night uh, as a Packer fan. But other than that, we got some great games on the way, even if they are losing teams. They're losing teams with a lot to fight for because they are expected to be so much better than they are. One adage to this, this isn't really a game prediction, but I'm taking the Eagles to move to 7-0. I don't really care what the score prediction is going to be. They're, they're going to win their football game. The Eagles are going to win. They're going to go to 7-0, fresh off a of bye. Nick Sirianni has proven to be a good coach. I trust him to have his team ready off the bye. I think they have really good leadership. They just traded for another edge rusher to add to that already stout defense. Watch out, NFC. The Eagles, I think, are just going to keep rolling. They don't show any signs of slowing down. They just look so good on so many levels. And I am beyond impressed with that. what they've been able to do this year as well. I had them doing well in the regular season, but I didn't believe that they would show what they've shown this year. I thought it would be closer games. I just kind of thought they'd capitalize on a weaker schedule. That's not the case at all, although they are capitalizing on the weaker schedule. But they're doing it in impressive fashion, to say the least. And I think they just keep rolling. That's what it looks like they're going to do right now. I don't think they go undefeated, obviously. But this is a team that's just, they're not going to lose very many games this year. And they just might represent the NFC in the big game to finish the year. That's all I got for you guys. If you want to see more of my content, make sure to subscribe. If you want to be notified when I post new videos, make sure to hit that bell icon. If you want to see what I have to offer on other social media platforms, follow me on Instagram and on TikTok at The Pocket Passer. I am more active on TikTok. I post kind of reactions to games as they're happening. I'm most commonly doing that for Monday night and maybe Thursday night. You might be seeing that as well. I need to try and get Sundays are a little more busy for me, so it's tougher to kind of do those videos. But I'm going to try and get more of that content out as well. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see all of you in the next video.